and I've been working on Ubuntu for seven years now. Uh, before then, I worked at Oakland University, where I was a system administrator at the engineering college, Dodge Hall. Any of you guys go to Oakland? Ooh, right. Oakland Grizzlies. <laughs> um, uh, before that, I was a contractor at Taycom on 696 in Mound. Yes, I don't even know where I worked before. Uh, before then, uh, I was in the Army, and then before then, I went to Michigan State, Los Martins. Right now I live in Ann Arbor, which is really fun for me. Um, so I'm gonna start off by apologizing because I just got back from a developer sprint in Las Vegas, where we unveiled Ubuntu on Power 8 systems with IBM live in front of an audience, and I have it all running. And I SSH day because I wanted to show you a bunch of stuff. So uh, we don't have a projector, so I'm going to deploy things and then turn around and show you, and, I don't know, pass around my laptop or something. Yeah. Um, so, before I get started, I recognize a bunch of you, some of you I do not, how many of you are using Ubuntu? On the desktop. Okay. On the server. On the phone. Mm. Ah, yeah, me either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking about the phone, the phone is interesting because you get in this kind of thing where we target the Nexus 4 and then they stop making Nexus 4. Uh, and we don't support Nexus 5s yet. I will also warn you that I am on uh, what we call CDO Economical, which is Core Cloud DevOps. So I'm more of the server guy. However, I did read and get as much information about the phone and client um, as I could before I got here. And I also worked initially on uh, bringing Unity to the desktop during 11.04 through 12.10. So I've lived through every battle that you guys could possibly throw at me. Um, so those of you that know me know I don't, uh, I'm not here to like, uh, what's a nice way to say blow smoke up your ass, but if you're not happy with something, just tell me and then we'll talk about it and then I'll show you, uh, I'll just show you stuff. So, so we have an hour and I hate to just sit and talk in front of people, so let's make this like a discussion. If you have a strong opinion, I'm going to need to sit up here. See, he already knows we're going to argue like the whole time. That's what he's sitting up here. Um, like I said, you guys are our users, and at the end of the day, I want you to be happy and tell me all the stuff that's broken so I can disappear for another year, and then you guys yell at me because I'm never around, and I come back, dude, I fixed what you said, and then, and then get yelled at again. So I was really kind of hoping... Wesley Crusher would be here. Uh, I know how to read. Yes. So, um, what do you guys want to hear about first? There's three things I want to talk about. That's going to be actually two things client and server. And then client will be desktop, phone, uh, TV. That'll be a quick, that'll be a quick summary right there. Um, and on server, I want to talk about OpenStack. I want to talk a little bit about Juju and a lot of the other orchestration tools that we're doing in the cloud. So, client or server? You get the Let's pick. go server since so you're really server. passionate about that. You guys want to go server first? Sure. How many of you are using Linux servers, but you're not using Ubuntu? Okay, out of you, don't keep your hands up. Out of that, how many of you guys are doing Linux servers in the cloud? Or are you doing traditional? Traditional? Yeah, traditional. Traditional? And cloud. Are you in the cloud? A little bit. How many of you are on Amazon? One guy on Amazon. How many of you guys are on HP's public cloud? Nobody. How many of you are on Mac, Microsoft Azure, Microsoft's cloud? A fully supported yeah. Linux, by the way. Do you ever think I'd say that up here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Pays the bills. Um, what else? What other clouds will we support? Joint? Any of you ever use Joint? Any of you use Solaris in the past? Yes. Okay. So the people that worked on Solaris, like, when they all got laid off or whatever, the apocalypse happened. Um, they all went to go work for Joint. The cloud is interesting because it's actually SmartOS underneath, which is a fork of Open Solaris, um, and they actually run their entire cloud on Solaris with like ZFS, and they have zones and stuff, uh, all on the back end. But all the client stuff is all Linux, so it's very interesting, right? It's like, uh, you know, but it's very very fast. It's specifically the networking, and it's priced compared comparatively to Amazon, so you should check it out. Uh, where else? Where else do we run? I run everywhere. Um, so, 
Servers, what do you guys want to talk about? So, when I say servers, what do you guys, what do you, okay, when I tell you Linux server, what do you think? Web. Okay. Web, Web server. Email? What else? Own cloud. What? Own cloud. Own cloud, that's a good one. <laughs> Ooh, remind me to show you own cloud here in a second. Okay. okay. Virtual <laughs> containers. What's that? Virtual and containers. Containers? <laughs> what else? Linux servers, what do you think? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Set that up, yeah. set that up. All right, good. He's got a projector. Real-time data processing. He's just been Real elevated okay, to God. Storage. <laughs> storage, that's a big one. Yeah. Okay, so how many of you totally grok what I say when I mean cloud? Like, if I say cloud, how many of you think Dropbox? <laughs> good. That's not what cloud is. Right? The problem with the term cloud is that everybody uses it for everything, right? You go to your tech conference, and the same crap the guy was selling you before, he puts cloud in front, right? Now, now we're the cloud database, right? You're like, wait a minute, dude, that was the same thing you showed from last year. Um, so people get mixed up, right? They think that, um, you know, cloud is, now client cloud, things like Dropbox and Google Drive, and right now it's like, my email's in the cloud. And it's, it's like, dude, it, so basic internet services are now cloud, whatever. Um, but that's a term that's messed up, right? Um, we had a file syncing service for your personal cloud, right? And then we canceled it because nobody used it except Craig. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, use it. I know, I know. And then for like the first three years, it didn't work. And that's just a sad story. Uh, we can talk about that later over liquor. Um, <laughs> so, and the uh, Ubuntu release party is uh, eight o'clock tonight. It's eight o'clock tonight. So. Yes. yes. So we can get drunk. That's right. Uh, no, I need a dongle. Anyone have a mini display port dongle? Anyone have a Mac? <laughs> I have a dongle Not upstairs. Here. <laughs> I have an HDMI laptop that would help. No, because I need my SSH keys and stuff. That would be awesome, whoever. Okay, I guess he's doing that. All right. Sorry, like I said, we thought we were going to have a projector, but whatever. Um, so, when we say cloud, what we really mean, when Linux vendors tell you we're all about cloud, right? Like we say it, Red Hat says it, Suze says it. What do they really mean? They mean infrastructure as a service, right? Just things like Amazon and HP Cloud. The fundamental thing that makes cloud computing different to anything else is that it's totally, totally backwards from everything you've learned about Linux servers. Everything I learned in college about how you run and manage things, things I was doing just seven years ago is totally, totally different, right? What if I told you, right, that, okay, my server broke. Throw it away and get a new one. What do you mean throw it away and get a new one? My, my, my Unix server is supposed to be like the pinnacle of uptime with its monolithic database, right? It never goes down. That's why people buy really, really big expensive things that look like refrigerators, right? <laughs> then what happened, right? The internet came along and people decided, thanks to Linux, that commodity hardware was the way to go. I could buy 500 really cheap, crappy servers, and if one of them goes down, my application is written properly so that it accounts for the failure. Then all of a sudden, you don't need expensive hardware, right? You can just throw hardware and stuff. This ability to grow like that is called elasticity in the cloud. Is this too simple or too complicated for anybody? Too simple. Just right. Too simple? Just right. Just right? Okay. This is called <laughs> elasticity, <laughs> right? So, ends up Linux is badass for this, right? So. What happens? Your, let, let me give you a name of a company. Okay, Dropbox, right? You start to get popular. What typically happened in the old days, right? Oh no, we're getting popular. Buy bigger servers, right? That's called scale up, right? If you look at a Windows shop today, that's what they do, right? Scale up, they just get bigger boxes, more sockets, more RAM, keep shoving as much things as you can in a single box. The cloud is totally different. It does horizontal scaling, right? Okay. We have X new users, pay some guy, he just racks stuff, and then you turn them on, and then they automatically provision. Who made this popular was Amazon, right? For the first time ever, you literally could just connect your credit card and say, I want hardware. Doom, 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 doom. Then they put an API in front of it, right? That's when developers got a taste for the cloud, and they realized, hey, dude, wait a minute, I can do my entire startup and not have a single upfront cost investment of hardware, right? If we wanted to build a really awesome startup right now, it's hard, right? You've got to buy hardware and then you're a sysadmin, but then you're a developer, so you think you're a sysadmin, but you're not. So you go to the local Linux user group, 
and then there's a guy, and it's always a guy like me who like hates everything, and then <laughs> but, he, but he's expensive, right? And you gotta pay him, and then all that stuff. If you're a startup, you could be two dudes with Amazon. Amazon is handling a lot of the stuff that normally you had to do, right? Monitoring and all this kind of stuff, and it's really, really, really <coughs> nice, right? Entire companies run <coughs> entire infrastructure off of Amazon. Netflix is a primary example, the poster, the poster child of, of the cloud. So everyone started to realize, man, the cloud is really great. Everybody, everybody wants this, right? Nobody, no tech guy, thank you so much for Brian Bill. Can you help me set up here? <laughs> Ryan, my technical assistant for this, for this, for this talk. All right, I don't know what's going on here, so you figure that out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan provisioned me up. Right, actually, actually, that's an interesting point, right? Like, so I told you guys I just got back from Vegas working on power, and I've been working Sorry. on these boxes since. Not the right one. Oh, oh. we need to go display port to HDMI. Oh, it's, it's a HDMI. You got some? No, you have SSH keys on? You don't have my SSH. No, that's not going to work. We have an a USB key. <laughs> oh, hold up. I do have goodies for you guys, though. <laughs> that way, you can at least have a good time. Not the cigarette. My wife's not supposed to see those. <laughs> All right. So I got the world class, the very first print of Juju stickers. So, these are cool. How many of you are using Juju at all? Oh, if you think I'm fired up now. Hold up. Alright, so I'll give, and then you guys open them up and pass them around. Sweet. Okay. George, do you want to just copy your SSH keys under there and then I'll get that in the bad Juju? Bad Juju. Do you have your normal laptop here, not the Chromebook? I need a real Chromebook. Oh. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, crack yeah. yeah. right. Come on, that's mine, so do whatever you want. I can get these I want to you. Alright. Yeah, just plug in. Okay. Oh dude, we can uh, we can remote desktop. We could. <laughs> <laughs> we can do all sorts of things. Yeah. Right? Alright. <laughs> <laughs> There's a brick with ports up here. <laughs> They're sitting and I'll go with this. Okay. So what happened, right? There was this like revolution of the way people do ops, right? For the first time ever, people were actually designing for failure. That seems like it makes sense now, but it did not back in the day, right? Now, back in the day when I used to administer something and the database went down, people flip out. Why is the database down? The database is not supposed to go down ever, right? These days, if the well, database goes system down, system the whole point is why does your application failing because part of the database is missing, right? So what you do is said you plan for failure. You have multiple databases that are everywhere, spread over data centers, regions, other buildings. It doesn't matter. You plan, as things get more complex, you plan for things failing, right? And Netflix was really kind of the driver in a lot of things. They actually wrote software called Chaos Monkey that they would run in their infrastructure. And it would go and it would turn stuff off. Like, they didn't do this like in practice, they did this on, the, on their production servers. Can you imagine, in the old school era, telling someone, yes, we're going to hire a college kid to just walk into the data center and start out and plugging shit. Like, that's what they did. But what happens? Things do fail, right? But you start to learn culturally how to design systems that are more robust and things like that. Ends up, it's also a lot more efficient, right? Then everybody wanted it, right? Everyone's like, I want, I want to, like, people would go and they say, and they look at their infrastructure, and they would say, man, why can't, why can't, I'll never be a Google, right? I'll never be a Facebook. I'll never be a, uh, uh, a Netflix, right? So Amazon gave people a taste of that, right? Um, however, Amazon can't get expensive. What, what's also the other, other bigger problem with Amazon? Anyone think of it? You don't, don't own your stuff. you don't own your stuff. Yeah, yeah. You don't own your stuff, but bigger than that. What if you don't like Amazon? <laughs> no. What if? What if? Not not just because they're Amazon, but vendor. Yeah. Right. Right. That cloud is very, very, very specific. Right. You could be the world's greatest Amazon expert, 
but you're only good at Amazon. Um, that and the rest of the computer industry wasn't going to let Amazon go around printing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they weren't going to let Amazon go around printing money while they did nothing. So um, that's that's why everyone's all about the cloud. That's why when we say a Bluetooth server, it's designed for the cloud, right? Um, it's always kind of been that way. People ask me, they're like, I wanted to try a Bluetooth server, and then I took it to work, and I set it up, and there was no UI, right? They're, they're expecting, like, you know, Microsoft Small Business Server Edition, right? And it's like, I want to host my email, all right? Now, we're more than happy to do that. If you want to you build your own kind of do that, that that's really great. But no, a Bluetooth server, we designed that for Netflix and for very large companies. That's why companies like Netflix are moving to a Bluetooth server this year. Dropbox runs on a Bluetooth server. Uber runs on a Bluetooth server. Banks, let's see which ones can I talk about. Hold up. <laughs> um, very, very large banks on the other side of the world where there's a lot of red flags. <laughs> there's there's a swallow. Here. One, one, one's a white flag with a red circle in it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So the very, the very large <coughs> snack deployments are are all running on Ubuntu. It's it's incredible. On places like Amazon, even on DigitalOcean and stuff, we are the dominant uh, cloud provider. Th that's as a guess. That means I want an instance of Linux things. Usually that's Ubuntu. Um, so it's pretty good. So what OpenStack is, is people were like, hey, the Amazon stuff is really great. But what if we could bring that kind of like workflow <coughs> to, to a private environment, right? If you're a large company, you're not going to throw away all the data centers that you ever built just to move to Amazon. Um, as much as people think that's a great idea. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so OpenStack is basically and this is a very, very generic thing because OpenStack is actually a collection of projects that continues to grow. Uh, it's basically the operating system for the data center that's built on Linux, right? And for, so when I was growing up, so I'm old, when I was growing up with Linux and the way Linux got everywhere was the LAMP stack. And you guys remember that? Yeah. Right? So like if you were in college and you wanted to get into this Linux thing, right? You had to learn LAMP, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Which oh. today it means Linux, Apache, many languages starting with P and PostgreSQL. That's my joke. Um, <laughs> so that was like how, what you had to learn, right? You're like, you know, MySQL, PHP. I do a whole bunch of stuff. OpenStack is this generation's Apache, right? All of our kids, all of the young kids and stuff that are off learning their stuff. They're going to figure out how to run infrastructures on OpenStack. It's that big. It's huge. In fact, we pivoted early and bet the entire company, Canonical did, on supporting OpenStack. And we've been there since the beginning. That's why all the large stuff supports OpenStack. So, we went to server for 14.04. This is an LTS release. Does anyone not know what that means? Okay, so typically we have, we release every six months, no matter what. Um, every two years or so, we put out what we call a long-term support release. This is supported for five years instead of the usual 18 months. Over 90% of all the users that are using Ubuntu server are always on the LTS. Um, because if you think about it, when you're in a cloud, do you really need the new kernel if the hardware is a virtual thing? No, not really, right? But uh, So you, you, know, you don't have to be as aggressive as far as hardware support uh, in the cloud. That's why the Ubuntu cloud images actually give you the older kernel. But that's okay. So this is an LTS release for uh, for us that we just came out with two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm tired. I mean, I've been yelling at by Mark Shuttleworth all week, so I'm like really tired. Um, we uh, we do developer sprints internally at Canonical where we all go in hotel rooms like this and uh, work on stuff. That's where I just got back from. Yeah. George, I, I saw some debate online about where the LTS comes from. Is it Debian? Uh, stable plus testing, and then the other releases are generally testing and, un and unstable? Right, so usually what happens, anyone not familiar with Debian? You should be, good. Um, <laughs> so Debian has three branches, uh, unstable, testing, and stable. Uh, normally, for a normal release, we, we rebase off of unstable packages. Some from experimental, too, that's per package. You can't generally say, you know, this is based on this and this. Usually for the LTS, we do switch to testing. That also depends on where Debian is in the release cycle. Um, 
So our release manager also participates in Debian. And it's no accident that the build chains usually between a Debian release and a Bluetooth release when they're close are exactly the same. So that's on purpose. That's why we, par um, that's why we participate in Debian, right? Every once in a while, the moons, stars, and stuff line up. And like mm -hmm. Debian and Ubuntu will have the same exact build and compilers. That's really handy. I don't think that happened this time, though. That happened in 1204. It depends on when Debian wants to release. Right? We're time-based there when it's, you know, yeah. feature and bug driven. Um, but if, if I went to uh, Amazon or, or something to get an instance, I would probably be getting 1204 instead. Um, yes, I don't know what we set by <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what we set by default. Mm -hmm. So what we do typically for this LTS release is for desktop users, if you want to upgrade, you can click the little upgrade thing and you'll upgrade. However, we don't turn on the thing that says, hey, you should upgrade to the new version until the first point release of this LTS. Oh. So that's going to be in June and July. So that means you get another, you get another month or so of bug fixes. <coughs> and we'll respin the ISOs. And then that becomes 1404.1. Yes. So that's, that's how that works. Now what happens, here's where it gets tricky. You don't have to know or care about this if you don't. Um, in six months, when we release 14.10, the new kernel and X and all that stuff, stuff that you need to make new hardware work, will actually backport that back to 1204.2, and then that will be the default stack. So one of the issues, that, like, so you get a server, you get a laptop, and you're like, I want to stick with the LTS. I hate that crazy six-month stuff. It doesn't work for me. But like six months after that CD is pressed, right, new hardware comes out. And then you're like, dude, right? So what do you do? You move to the six months releases, and then I make you upgrade every six months, and you hate me. So, mm -hmm. so that's nice. As as new kernel, like, if um, and we're backporting the 1404 kernel back to 1204. So if you want to keep 1204 around, that's fine. Remember, 1204 is supported for five years. It's not even halfway through its life cycle, right? So um, you don't have to upgrade if you don't want to, especially on servers. On servers for a while, we I pro, we usually um, sysadmins I know won't even start looking at upgrades until at least a point of release or two. Um, but it's fine because there's a scheduled cadence there, right? So there's there's never a surprise of Bluetooth release, right? People know, okay, in two years this is where they're going to be, right? And that's the value that that Ubuntu provides. So did I, did anything actually get working? No. no. Oh, okay, so we're screwed. All right. <laughs> now, so. That's all really great. Um, so, any any questions about server in particular before I move on to like what's new and what's different? Nothing. Okay. So, uh, probably the biggest. Feat, so, I go around at conferences and I say, "What do you hate about Ubuntu Server?" And I was like, "Nothing. It's amazing." There was a guy. Do you know Disney.com? I don't know Ubuntu. There was a guy heckling me, and he was like, "I don't like this." I was like, "Whatever, dude. Where do you work?" He's like, "Disney." And I was like, "Oh." I got a Yoda doll? <laughs> <laughs> he actually gave me one of their um, their labs. They have that they have a cool special Disney Labs button that I lost. That's like Mickey and Minnie. He was like, yeah, this is the infrastructure button. I was like, okay, that's kind of weird, but okay. Um, <laughs> so I go around to conferences and say, what do you want in a Ubuntu server? And then people always, oh, over and over again, we want Nginx, 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 Nginx. Nginx, that's this thing that's spelled N-G-I-N-X, that everyone says, Nginx, what's that? Uh, it's a web server, uh, so that's in Maine now due to the work of a community guy, uh, Thomas Ward, who's basically awesome, and um, one of my co-workers who's helping him get that stuff into Debian uh, and Ubuntu. It's very fast, very lightweight, not to say that Apache's bad, but most Rails developers, Node.js developers, all the new stacks tend to build around Nginx. So that's what the users want, that's what you get. If you're an Apache guy, um, you get Apache 2.4 in 1404. This is a major upstream release. So don't be like, get upgrading blindly and then blame me because you didn't really read the release though. Um, but you know that, you guys are professional sysadmins, right? Or you're like me, just like make it up. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, so let's see what else is okay. So that's about basically all the changes in traditional Ubuntu server. Uh, OpenStack is the big one. So OpenStack, uh, the way they develop software and stuff is kind of inspired by the Ubuntu community because 
Ubuntu guys were there when they invented OpenStack. Uh, we've been very involved with OpenStack since the beginning. So they released 2014.1, which is called the Ice House. They have nicknames too, just like we do. Um, is available in 1404. This is a huge upgrade um, as OpenStack innovates very quickly. So it's important to do that. Important for you, if you want, if for those of you that want to mess around with OpenStack, we also backported Ice House to 1204. Uh, this is obviously important for large institutions that don't want to, they just want the latest OpenStack. They don't want to like also have to do an OS upgrade as part of it. Um, so that's, that's pretty huge. And then the last important bit of Ubuntu server, what I actually work on, my most favorite thing in the whole universe, uh, which is Juju. So Juju is a service and cloud orchestration tool. So what I'm going to do here is deploy some awesomeness. And I'm giving you the exact demo that Mark Shuttleworth gave at IBM Impact in Vegas just a few minutes ago. I don't know how many of you can see it. I love ThinkPads. Look, look what I'm doing here. Um, too bad they ruined them. So what I'm doing here is you can now drag and drop blocks of infrastructure around for your stuff, right? So how many of you set up, oh god, I have to, WordPress. It's like, I hate this example. It's like the worst hell of the world. WordPress? Yeah. MediaWiki? Mm -hmm. How many of you have tried to set up Hadoop before? Yeah? How far did you get? Uh, pretty far. <laughs> we got oh. right. it took a while. How long? Uh, about a week. Okay, I'm doing it in 173 months. seconds. A week? Yeah. How long? It was like three days. Three days. Good one. Who else? Yeah. That's not to say he's no, it bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anybody, any, any, anybody else? How many of you have ever tried to deploy WebSphere before? IBM? Oh, stuff? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the reaction I got at the IBM conference. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many of you are familiar with AppGet? Okay, Juju is at get for the cloud. Okay? Nice. Remember when you first discovered the LAMP stack and you're like, the task in Debian, right? It's like, oh, install LAMP stack and install all the things for you and everything. And it was great, you had one machine. And then you set that up at work and then they're like, well, actually, we need to scale the database. You're like, oh, no, what do I do now, right? So you try to set up another one, run the same thing, but it's an isolated stack. They don't talk to each other, right? So what this does is, this is service, this is called service orchestration. A lot of people haven't gotten this. People are getting there, right? So then this is the next evolution of things after configuration management, right? How many of you are using, use, using tools like Chef or Puppet or Ansible or Salt? Right. This is the stuff that makes all that put together. How many of you guys are using Ansible? So we're, we're starting to notice that, especially with our ops guys, Ansible with Juju is a really great combination. Because Ansible is really simple, it doesn't have an agent, it's nice. Um, so what I'm deploying here is I'm deploying Sugar CRM. How many of you guys heard of this? It's like a CRM PHP thing, right? MariaDB, which is a MySQL-like database. HAProxy, because we need a load balancer. Remember, horizontal scaling, like I talked about before, right? Um, here I'm installing WebSphere just because I am now the world's fastest WebSphere installer guy. <laughs> um, and here we're going to do Hadoop, and we're going to monitor Hadoop with Ganglia, a Ganglia node, and whatever. See how the boxes are all not connected? Mm -hmm. keep, keep paying attention. Because um, what happens is, is, as you start to get to the Amazon scale, right, the Google scale, the number of machines kind of like gets blurry, right? But like after you pass, after you pass a thousand, after you pass two, after you pass ten thousand, right, the concept of managing individual machines just becomes like hurts, right? Even though you have tools like Chef or Puppet. So the way we do this is we do it from the top down. And the service is the first class primitive, not the machine. That means we say, Ubuntu, I want my SQL. And it says, OK, I'll go find you a server. It's a cloud. I don't even care. Just go get me a box. Except when I do care. So I can say, Judge, you find me a machine that has at least eight cores and 32 gigs of RAM. It's going to be my database server. Right? We do that for you. And then you end up managing things at the service level. When you manage things at the service level, you get my favorite. You get my favorite feature, horizontal scaling for free, right? So if Sugar CRM knows how to talk to MariaDB, I can add 50 Sugar CRM units, and if the service understands what the relationship is to the database, <coughs> I can just keep adding units. That's how you scale. Oh no, we're going to have our Twitter, Twitter moment. I need 15 more MySQLs. 
actually, let me be safe. I want one master, three slaves. You just connect the dots. Um, this is obviously the impressive GUI that you show your manager, but um, the command line is where it's at. Every single, this is all free software. You can deploy this.